Welcome everyone to the House of More Politics. Okay, let's get to it. Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton had their first forum uh, as presidential candidates yesterday. They did a uh, commander-in-chief forum. Um, and I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm going to try to do this quick. Uh, this may stretch about 10, 15 minutes. I was thinking about doing a two-parter, but I'm going to go ahead and try to do one video and just try to squeeze all this stuff in. Um, let's get with Hillary Clinton first, shall we? Okay, first and foremost, I mean, it was a 30 minute, uh, they got 30 minutes apiece, but I think she spent about 10, 15 minutes on those damn emails. So let's go and get with like the first question. Right. Uh, it was something that should not have been done. But the real question is the handling of classified material, which is, I think, what the implication of your question was. And for all the viewers watching you tonight, I have a lot of experience dealing with classified material, starting when I was on the Senate Armed Services Committee, going into the four years as Secretary of State. Classified material has a header which says top secret, secret, confidential, nothing. And I, would, I will repeat this, and this is verified in the report by the Department of Justice, none of the emails sent or received by me had such a header. Director Comey, uh, Secretary Clinton said she never sent or received any classified information over her private email. Was that true? Our investigation found that there was classified information sent. So it was not true? It, right. That's what I said. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm looking for a little shorter answer so you and I are not here quite as long. Secretary Clinton said there was nothing marked classified on her emails either sent or received. Was that true? That's not true. There were a small number of portion markings on, I think, three of the documents. Secretary three, Clinton three, said, sorry, I did not emails. email any classified material to anyone on my email. There is no classified material. Was that true? No, there was classified material emailed. Now, there you have it. She is lying. Now, 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 I'm going to, I'm going to do the political side of this. So please don't comment on, me on some bullshit. Listen before you comment. But listen to me, look at. All right, the reason why Director Comey will not prosecute is because even though she was careless with her emails, there was no intent that she was doing anything illegal. There is no intent for her to divulge secrets by sending those emails. She wasn't intending to send that to do harm to the government. That's why there's no reason to prosecute. Now you can say she did some other shit wrong with the server and stuff like that. That's fine. She lied to us, but I will tell you this, when she went in there and she talked to the director of the FBI, she didn't lie because she could have told the American people one thing, but when she got in that office with the director, she didn't lie to him. That's that's my opinion of it. Now you can have your own opinion, but that's mine. But also, also, she did get advice from General Colin Powell. She asked him about the BlackBerry and stuff, because that stuff just came out today. She asked him about how to do this with the BlackBerry, how to do that, and what I do. And guess what he said? He said that he did other stuff and went through other, other things like AOL and used a landline with the little plug-in back in the day when you plug in the phone cord to your computer. He did that to bypass the State Department servers. I'm going to put the link in, in below so you can go take a look at it. And guess where that's from? That's from Fox News. Fox News reported on this too, that she got advice on how to do, like to go to bypass stuff from Colin Powell. The only thing she did was instead of using AOL private servers, instead of using America Online uh, private servers, she got her own. There's no difference than what she did and what Colin Powell did. And one last thing with the Colin Powell thing. They have reached out to him for him to release whatever documents or give them permission to go to AOL and get those private server emails. And he has yet to respond to that request. So comment on that. Look at what the Republican Secretary of State did. Look at what the Democrat Secretary of State did and form your opinions. Let's keep going. How do you think these people feel when the person running to be their commander in chief says her vote to go to war in Iraq was a mistake? Look, I think that the decision to go to war in Iraq was a mistake. And I have said that my voting to give President Bush that authority was, from my perspective, my mistake. I also believe 
that it is imperative that we learn from the mistakes like after action reports are supposed to do. And so we must learn what led us down that path so that it never happens again. I know a lot of people regret their vote because they got bad information from then Secretary Colin Powell, then uh, I think Condi Rice was in there. Which, which one was she? Was she Secretary of State then? But she was there, Condoleezza Rice, Dr. Rice, Secretary of State Colin Powell, uh, George Bush himself, the Vice President Dick Cheney, a lot of people on that team, Donald Rumsfeld, a lot of people on that team were saying Iraq had weapons of mass destruction. We initially was in Afghanistan fighting Afghanistan. And within three to four months, we had diverted that war to Iraq. Of course, she's going to regret that, that uh, thing. You can't hold every vote. You can. You can. You can hold people accountable for their votes because her pushing a button in Congress affected lives and boots on the ground. So, yes, Barack Obama used that tactic to win the White House in 2008. Donald Trump is trying to use the, that same tactic in 2016 to win the White House. Was it a mistake? Yes. She had faulty intelligence. She's smarter than that. She should have known not to go and vote on something where she didn't have all the information. She chose to make that decision. And now, 16 plus years later, she has to deal with it. That's on her. So she's going to continue to apologize. And every soldier, sailor, airman, and marine that died, she, says, she should say she's sorry a thousand times for each one that passed away. To speed this along, the rest of her, uh, her speech was about, the rest of the uh, interview or whatever was about uh, helping the VA, Iraq, Iran, and the nuclear deal. She talked about that. Uh, she went back to some other stuff that's to help help support vets in terms of suicide and uh, the VA and things like that. We should not privatize the VA. We should make it accessible to where we don't necessarily have to go to a VA center. That we can go to the nearest hospital. I mean that would be that would be good. I just retired, so I'm just going. I'm just getting along into the VA system myself. So I'm not really familiar with everything right now. I'm just. I'm right now. I'm just taking it one day at a time. But. It can be cumbersome. It's a lot of information to get. So Hillary Clinton, I think she did okay. She could have done a little bit better and explained a little bit better. Uh, that email thing is going to kill her if she keeps saying one thing and evidence keeps showing something else. It's going to kill her. So she's got to come out and tell the truth on it. She's just got to be upfront. All she does is apologize and to defend what she says. And I think it would be too late for her to, uh, to come clean with it because the election is only a couple of months away. And she can't, after months of saying one thing, she can't all of a sudden, within the next two months, say, now I'm going to do this. She can't. So let's stop right now and go on over to Trump. Let's, <laughs> let's just go on over to Trump. Every time you, you talk to a president, they'll tell you the most daunting part of the job is the role of commander in chief. Right. What have you experienced in your personal life or your professional life that you believe prepares you to make the decisions that a commander-in-chief has to make? Well, I've built a great company. I've been all over the world. I've dealt with foreign countries. I've done very well, as an example, uh, tremendously well dealing with China and dealing with so many of the countries before. And I've had great experience dealing on an international basis. But what have you done and in I your life that prepares bad. you to send men and women of the United States into harm's way? Well, I think the main thing is I have great judgment. I have good judgment. I know what's going on. I, I've called so many of the shots. And Okay, Matt Lauer, that was a loaded question because no person that's run for president can honestly say that they have experienced something in their lives that will prepare them to put people in harm's way. The only people that can do that are generals or officers or whoever served in the military who was put in a position to do that prior to serving as president. And you can go back and name the generals. You can name General George Washington, uh, Jackson, Taylor, Grant, Eisenhower. These are some of the men that actually led Marines and soldiers and sailors or whatever prior to serving as president. So you didn't ask Hillary that question. That was a loaded question and I think that was wrong. I happened to hear Hillary Clinton say that I was not against the war in Iraq. I was totally against the war in Iraq. From a, You can look at Esquire magazine from 04. You can look at before that. And Are you for invading Iraq? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, you know, I wish it was, I, I wish the first time it was done correctly. Right. 
<laughs> yeah, Donald Trump, I went before that. And you were for invading Iraq. And also, you wished back in 93 that we had done it better. I'm not going to even reveal my age and tell you how old I was back in 93. But I will say this. When I was that age back then, I was like, you know what? Why did they stop? If uh, this Saddam guy was a bad guy, why didn't they just go and get him? But you did. You lied. One of the things you said, you also said this. I can promise you this. I will always tell you the truth. It's true. So let me read some of the things you said. I know more about ISIS than the generals do. Believe me. Was that the truth? Well, the generals under Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton have not been successful. Do you know ISIS, more about ISIS than they do? I think under the leadership of Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton, the generals have been reduced to rubble. They have been reduced to a point where it's embarrassing for our country. I don't know how to answer that other than to say that the generals serve this country under the president. They advise the president and they follow those orders. So you can't fault the generals for the failures. You hold the administration responsible because the president is the commander in chief. I would never disrespect any general and say that they've been reduced to rubble because there are some tough MF and generals out there. And I would also say this, if you want to get political with it, I would also say that when George W. Bush was in charge, those generals didn't do that great either because here we are still at it, right? I mean, if that's the argument that you want to make. We've met in the past and we've talked. You say things like, I'm going to bomb the expletive out of them very sure. quickly. And when people like me press you for details, like that gentleman just said, on what your plan is, you very often say, I'm not going to give you the details because I want to be unpredictable. Absolutely. The but, word is unpredictable. But yesterday you actually told us a little bit about your plan in your speech. You said this, quote, we're going to convene my top generals and they will have 30 days to submit a plan for soundly and quickly defeating ISIS. So is the plan you've been hiding this whole time asking someone else for their plan? No. Yes. No. But when I do come up with a plan that I like and that perhaps agrees with mine or maybe doesn't, I may love what the generals come back with. I will continue. But you have your own plan. I have a plan. Okay, look, I agree. We should not be telling anybody what we're doing militarily. We just shouldn't. We shouldn't announce that we're going to leave a certain place at a certain time. We shouldn't. That's just dumb. But I guarantee you he has no plan. Go back and look at what he just said. He's going to convene his top generals. He doesn't have a plan. But then when you ask him the question directly, he says, yes, he don't. Russia wants to defeat ISIS as badly as we do. If we had a relationship with Russia, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could work on it together and knock the hell out of ISIS? Wouldn't let, that be a wonderful thing? Let me ask thing? you about what Donald Trump don't understand is that Russia wants Syria for a different reason than we do. Now, go back to World War II. Uh, FDR and Winston Churchill worked with Stalin to defeat Hitler. But then we had to turn around and do some other stuff because Stalin was trying to do something wrong and grab some other countries himself. Stalin wanted world domination also. But the enemy of my enemy is my friend. So in that regard, he's right. But he don't understand why we won't work with Russia. Some of the things you've said about Vladimir Putin, you said, I will tell you in terms of leadership, he's getting an A. Our president is not doing so well. And when referring to a comment that Putin made about you, I think he called you a brilliant leader. You said it's always a great honor to be so nicely complimented by a man so highly respected within his country and beyond. Well, he does have an 82 percent approval rating, according to the different pollsters who, by the way, some of them are based right here. Look, he's also look. a guy who annexed Crimea, invaded Ukraine, supports Assad in Syria, supports Iran, is trying to undermine our influence in key regions of the world. And according to our intelligence committee community, probably is the main suspect for the hacking of the DNC computers. Well, nobody basically. knows that for a fact. But do you want me to start naming some of the things that President Obama does. But do you at want the same to be time? complimented by that former KGB officer? Well, I think when he calls me brilliant, I'll take the compliment, okay? The fact. Well, two things. 
That proves Matt Lauer knows more than Trump, and Trump is a narcissist. He'll take a compliment from anybody, as long as it's a compliment. You have a question for Mr. Trump. I do. Mr. Trump, I wanted to ask what your plan will be to stop 20 veterans a day from killing themselves. And actually, it's 22, and it's, a, it's, it's almost... Okay, he was wrong. That's why the girl shook her head. If you look behind her, there's a guy shaking his head too, because they know that the number has been revised from 22 to 20. So his, his um, research is, is wrong, is outdated. As president, what specifically would you do to support all victims of sexual assault in the military? It's a great question, and it's a massive problem. Uh, the numbers are staggering, hard to believe even, but we're going to have to run it very tight. I, at the same time, want to keep the court system within the military. I don't think it should be outside of the military, but we have to come down very, very hard on that. And your daughter is absolutely right. It is a massive problem, but we have to do something about that problem. And the best thing we can do is set up a court system within the military. Right now, the court system practically doesn't exist. In it takes too long. In 2013, on this subject, you tweeted this, quote, 26,000 unreported sexual assaults in the military, only 238 convictions. What did these geniuses expect when they put men and women together? Well, it is, it, is a, it is a correct tweet. There are many people that think that that's absolutely correct. And we need to have a strength. So this and should we need have been have... expected? And does that mean the only well, way to well, fix it is to take women out of right? the military? And, and by the way, since then, it's gotten worse. No, not to kick them out, but something has to be happened. Okay. It was so much in that one little segment, I don't even know where to start. The dude is wrong. First, he didn't answer the question. All he talked about was the court system, and the court system is not outdated. The court system is not flawed. It's accurate. We have a problem with people not reporting sexual assault. We have a problem with people in the military not believing when one of their Marines, airmen, soldiers, or sailors come forward and say they've been sexually assaulted, assaulted, even with the men. Men have been known to be sexually assaulted in the military and not reported. So he has no idea what he's talking about. So he has no plan. He kept repeating about the damn court system. And then he tweeted a couple of years ago about separating females. This dude has no idea what the fuck he's talking about. Okay, guys, I'm going to leave it right there. I'm going over. I'm almost at 20 minutes. Uh, for those that stayed throughout the uh, the video, I appreciate it. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, who who won that debate? Who was more right in that debate? I read some reports today that, hey, both of them lied for the most part uh, continuously um, or misquoted or misphrased or whatever the hell you want to call it politically nowadays. Both of them lied throughout their, uh, their, their forum uh, visits. What do you think? I have my I have my opinion, but I want you guys to make uh, to make yours. I want to hear yours. Subscribe to the channel. Comment below. And yes, I want to live deep inside Donald Trump's because if you go back to Clinton, most of that shit was about emails. I don't have time for that. I mean, I want to hear about policy. And she really didn't really talk about policy anyway because she was so focused on the emails. So comment below. Subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you guys think. And until the next presidential debate, peace.